Today, let's talk about midlife crisis. No, I'm kidding. Instead, we're gonna talk about mid-career crisis for reverse engineer and malware analyst and how it usually happens. What do I mean by that? Um, it's when you, you're here, joining the industry as a reverse engineer or malware analyst. And here you had the experience of from zero to one years in industry. You are a super happy person. You reverse engineer every day, hopefully, if you get the right job and it's hopefully fun and time passes, passes, passes. And about two to three years later, you are a slightly different person. Maybe you have longer hair. But the most important thing besides the longer hair is that now you're a little bit bored. You bored just reverse engineer the same things every day. So you start looking around and thinking, okay, what's my new next career path? And I met many people like this, and I even hired some people like that in my career. It, it's very, very typical, I think, for reverse engineer when you are comfortable with your knowledge now. In the beginning, when you're zero to one years, you're probably slightly uncomfortable with your knowledge, not fully confident. You're still learning, even if you're reverse engineering the same things over and over again. Over again, after two, three years, you reach that point where you, you know, comfortable enough to to be reverse engineer, malware analyst at pretty much any company, and you know, now it's not that difficult to analyze 99% of malware for you. Why is it a crisis, though? Why why do I think that a lot of people get stuck? here in that point of their career. Well, first of all, and that would be the red line, it's continued the same thing. And when I ask people like that, okay, but what do you want? How do you want, how do you see yourself in one, two, three years? How do you, what, what's your career path? They say reverse engineer better. And while I'm okay with that, I mean, I'm honestly um, always like when people try to be better at certain things. The problem is that's not an answer for career progression. From a manager perspective, to hire a reverse engineer with three years experience and hire a reverse engineer with five years experience, it's almost the same thing. At some point, your years of experience, if you're not changing what you do and you just continue revert like this, this monotonic reversing of malicious samples, your career gets stalled. And actually, the, the problem is with the longer you do it, the more it negatively it impacts your career, in my opinion. The main reason for it is as soon as it four to five years or four to six years, and you're still doing it and you didn't find any kind of new evolution of your career yet, you become expensive. You don't yet acquire a next domain of knowledge where you can have more impact on the company and on the customers, because the only way you can impact is to reverse engineer malware but you're already a higher price tag. So you're a higher price tag now, but you still cannot do other things except reverse engineer. And that's why I believe it's so crucial for anyone in reverse engineer malware analyst, when you reach that point, when you're really comfortable reversing malware, you probably have you know, three, maybe even two, four years of experience in your career, start to learn more things. Start to learn new things. Here you really can make a decision where you want to go because you have a good skill, so you can make certain choices. One choice, and that's a choice I picked uh, when I was progressing in my career, was the threat detection technology. So instead of just reversing, you still reverse engineer, but now you also slowly acquiring a new dev skills. And you don't need to be a production ready developer. You just acquire a skills enough to develop some proof concept. It's like you're observing many, many different malware samples, right? And you see the pattern and you're like, damn, why do I even reverse engineer all that stuff over on or you want to automate? And that's willing to automate is what brings you to this threat detection. You want to automate the routine work. You start building tooling and then proof of concept of some detection algorithms and so on. If you go this route, of course, you need to learn how to dev. And there's, I guess the language just doesn't matter here. It all depends what kind of, uh, what kind of technology you want to build. If it's low level technology, probably C++, 
And then if it's automation and tuning, the Python is great. Um, but honestly, at some point it doesn't really matter. What do matter is try to learn to write not crappy code from the beginning. And the easiest way to write not crappy code is to do unit test. And it can be as simple as when you develop your new IDA Pro script to automate something, spend two more hours to to cover it with unit test for 90%. If that's not possible, one of the most likely reasons is that you, you're writing a crappy code. So just spend extra time to, to, to do a unit test driven development and that you will see over and over, even just as simple as this IDA Pro scripts you're writing, it will transform the way you develop in much more coherent way. You will learn how to speak that development language that would advance your career much quickly. And now you're becoming that reverse engineer model analyst with the development uh, abilities and you, you can progress in the career. And, and now people are fine to pay you more, right? Because you, you're adding extra value. It's something customer is impacted directly on. Another path, which I didn't choose, but it's also a great path. And, and um, back in the day, when I kind of was in the middle of choosing what to do, that was not not even a p real path, right? But but nowadays it's threat hunting and intelligence, and here you you getting this reverse engineer plus Intel, and it, it actually depends on the company you're gonna end up on. But this is you really need to make sure if you do that you getting into the company which does have intelligence to analyze because you can get trapped here as well if you're getting in the company which actually just want some threat hunting for the internal purposes and you're going to be like one or two people and, and you're just going to continue that boring stuff where threads are going to be all the same and you don't actually have visibility on much more uh, like other actors, right? For example, like sometimes, uh, and it's a good question for, for everyone, is threat hunting and Intel necessarily equal to work in SOC? I don't think so. SOC is different. Right, SOC is when you you know you you protecting the organization. There is also threat intelligence on the vendor side. So th always the two options. You can either work in on the customer side, and that for example SOC, and you can also work on the vendor side. You it all there is no better or worse. You you have to see what company is doing, how serious company about um, detection, and what's the visibility and if it matches your career aspirations, right? Because the worst thing is to have that skill of reverse engineer malware analysis and then get a good salary and get stuck in some boring environment for a few years just because of the salary. And then you're looking back and you're like, damn, why did I waste my time? Because believe me, the time in your life and your career is more, more important than money. Another option, and, and that's kind of new, I think it, 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 it builds up nowadays really well it's machine learning. And I feel like it's very similar to development. It's close, but it requires some extra skill. You can actually start prototyping some machine learning tools if you understand machine learning without being production level development, developer of detection technologies. To be more clear, like you don't need to be a sandbox developer and machine learning developer at the same time. It's very different skills required but it's also an option where you can go. So what I'm trying to say in this video that every secondary domain you learn and acquire, either it's a development, is it machine learning? Is it intelligence? Is it hunting? It increases your value because you can have bigger impact on a customer success and on a company. Now you're not just looking at the things and writing reports, but you can go step further and convert it into either actionable intelligence or actionable threat detection technology or new machine learning algorithm or new sandbox or whatever it is, right? But I think it's very important to understand that just getting a better reverse engineer, I think maybe 10 years ago, that would be fine. I feel right now the competition is so high and also opportunities are so great that if you, after f four years, you just still want to be a better, just reverse engineer with no extra skill, I'm afraid you're going to hit the wall. There are exceptions. There are people who just reverse engineer for 15 years and they progress in a, in a great company and they become these leaders of you know, thread world. And we have a few companies where you can see people like that, but 
you have to land a really good position in a good company, which will give that opportunity for you to just reverse engineer. In most of the companies, you just become an expensive resource, which cannot have a direct impact on a customer, on a cust for customers and the customer value. Thank you for watching, and uh, hopefully it was useful. And as always, I invite everyone to comment, criticize. It's it, I know it's controversial topic, so it's always exciting to discuss. Thank you.